You love your new Honda and we do too. That's why every new Ralph Honda comes with Honda Service Pass, a complimentary maintenance program for your vehicle's first two years or 24,000 miles. For peace of mind and maintenance made easy, see us at West Ridge Road and online. Ralph Honda. After you've been injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter time limitations where you can be denied your benefits. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors & Ferris, your trusted and dedicated Workers' Comp attorney. Connors & Ferris, your Workers' Comp attorneys. Since 1922, Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp has provided an opportunity for children with disabilities to simply have fun. Each year, more than 2,500 kids enjoy a one-of-a-kind camping experience at our 157-acre camp in Rush, New York. Our staff members are experienced and highly trained to work with children facing all kinds of physical challenges. At Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp, kids with disabilities get the chance to have fun and just be kids. For more information, please visit us at sunshinecamp.org. Save the date. On June 25th, 2024, Section 5 is hosting its second annual scholarship golf tournament at the Lynx at Greystone, beginning with a 10 a.m. shotgun start. Last year's event successfully raised over $11,000 and we're now able to award $500 scholarships to student athletes in each sport that we offer. Visit section5.org slash golf tournament to get the latest information and to register your foursome today. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 broadcast network. The production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org watch. Coming into Lattimore on a daily basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in. As soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and, you know, we, we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain laughing and smiling and having a great time and almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life and then somebody there says I can help you, there's no better feeling than that. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. 
Visit section5.org slash mugs and more to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest. Times have changed, but one thing's the same. At Ralph Honda, we're a family. For three generations and more than 90 years, we've helped you get where you need to be in a safe, reliable vehicle. Find your next Honda at Ralph Honda. Proud to be part of your family. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Cross Arena, the site of this weekend's Section 5 Boys Basketball Finals. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you on the Section 5 Broadcast Network, ready to take you through six championship matchups this morning, this afternoon, and tonight on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. First, we have the Class C3 matchup. It should be a good one. Number four, Batavia Notre Dame taking on number three, Arkport Canisarega. Arkport has never claimed a sectional championship. Canisarega's last title came in 1999, while Batavia Notre Dame, one of the most historic programs in all of Section 5, and Coach Dickens, the Irish, in search of their 11th title here tonight. So we're here this this morning. Yeah, I was going to say this morning. Yeah, it's an early morning for those in Batavia and those coming up from our court in Canisarega. But you know, uh, Notre Dame, as was the case with Avon last night, got to the finals last year and lost. So they're hungry coming back. Most of these kids were were uh, starters for Notre Dame. Um, they have a presence at the Blue Cross Arena almost almost all the time. It seems like they're here in the D's and now they're up in C. Uh, our court Canisarega. Really excited to see what the freshman Caden Carey, and I'm really excited to see him in person. I've heard a lot of great things, and I think we're in store for a great matchup of games all day. Six of them. We're starting it off here with Notre Dame and Artport Canisarega, which I think would be a great leadoff hitter for us. Artport Canisarega, as I said, the number three seed comes in at 17 and four. Notre Dame, the four seed, comes in at 18 and five. 22 title appearances for Notre Dame in its history, as I said, 10 titles, the last coming in 2022. Head coach Mikey Rapone in his second season, officially as head coach, really kind of a co-head coaching situation with his father during that 2022 season. So coach, excuse me, 2021 season. So coach Mikey Rapone hoping to lead the Irish back to the championship here. And he's got a list of talented players, Jaden Sherwood, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Jay Antonor among them. We'll pa pause for a moment for the national anthem here at Blue Cross Arena.
So moments away from tip-off here at Blue Cross Arena. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you. John Guarino and Joel Belthazer on the controls. Varsity Media Sports Network streaming through the Section 5 broadcast network. And, Coach, you already mentioned Caden Carey for Arkport Canis Arega. Also, Ibra Ford and Tim Vilku, two talented players for the Wolves. They hope to lead this team into battle and a successful battle at that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. Notre Dame has these kids that came back, and obviously Jaden Sherwood leads them in scoring. He can, he can score getting to the basket. He can shoot it well. Fitzpatrick, more of a three-point shooter there. Jay Antnor just kind of does it all. Like he's, he, every time I watch that kid play, he really impresses me. So, like I said, I have not watched our court Canis Rega in person. I did see that they beat Dansville early in the season, and I had reached out to Coach Moody and just said, wow. And uh, he talked about this freshman, Caden uh, Carey, and, and how talented he was. And you see Coach uh, Max Huey there for our court, Canis Rega, you know, having a conversation with him on Friday, very excited to uh, um, have our court, who has never won a title, like you said, in boys or girls basketball, have that opportunity today, um, bright and early at 10 a.m. So starters being introduced for both sides, beginning with the number three seeded Wolves, but both sides being introduced simultaneously. Something different, I think, here at Blue Cross Arena. I don't remember. There was a lot of confusion here. I don't think. Yes. Like I said, these teams are, uh, Arkport Canis Rega not used to being here. Coach is having to direct the, coach the kids with whose hands to shake, but after the first player, it gets easier. So for Notre Dame, it will be Ryan Fitzpatrick, Jay Antonor, Chase Antonor, Jaden Sherwood, and George Woodruff. Ball for Arkport Canis Arega. We have Ibra Ford. Also Devin Moran. Caden Carey. And two others waiting to join. Tim Vilku. You see Coach Huey already out there. And also Alex Vilku. So the Vilkus round out the starting lineup for the Wolves. And these two small schools filling the stands here behind their... I say, I say filling relatively. I was at the AAA game last night as UPrep and Franklin really packed the house. These two Class D schools bringing all they can here to Blue Cross Arena. Certainly a different environment for both of these teams. Right. I think, well, you have six games going on today, and, and you'll see start the basketball junkies start to come in as the day progresses a little bit. Uh, looks like the Batavia faithful, maybe a little late start getting up here, but um, there was a long line of people as, as I came into the arena, and like I said, the 10 a.m. start, not ideal. I mean, Teams don't play at 10 a.m. during the season at all. So one of the things that you want to see at the beginning of the game is how these kids respond. Arkport Canis Rig kids have probably been up since 6 a.m. You know, between getting up, getting to the school, getting on the bus, coming up. You know, Notre Dame maybe got a little bit more of a uh, 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 able to sleep in. But, you know, this is early. Um, typically that favors the defense. Offense usually might struggle a little bit. As I said last night, First few possessions, try to get to the basket. Try to get to the hole. It's easier to make layups and shoot threes at 10 a.m. So here we go. Ball is up. It's a class C3 final here at Blue Cross Arena. And Notre Dame takes the first lead of the game. It's Jaden Sherwood finishing off the tip. Yeah, ideal start for Notre Dame. And like I said, a layup's the way to start it. And Sherwood just has a knack for getting to the hoop. And there's a nice steal. Fitzpatrick takes it away for the Irish. In the lane, up, no good. Jay Antonor saves it from going out of bounds. Tried to bounce it off the leg of Tim Vilku, but he was able to corral it. Now leading the break. Into the front court come the Wolves, and in the hands of Devin Moran, he'll set things up for AC. 
In the lane, bounced over to Alex Vilku. Ball fake, taken away by Woodruff, but tipped into the hands of Carey. Now onto the wing for Ford. And to the elbow, the jumper from Alex Vilku, no good. Notre Dame comes away with the rebound. And the finish inside. Quick 4-0 lead for the Irish as Jay Antonor finds his way into the scorebook. Our court Canis Arega on the other end. It's Ford finishing to get the Wolves on the board. That's a nice strong finish with his left hand there. So it's going to be interesting to see which team can find its rhythm first. And thus far it's been the Irish as Fitzpatrick finds his way to the rack. And really these games really come down to rhythm and runs as we saw throughout our three games yesterday. And in close games, it comes down who can make the last run. Absolutely, and as you see, Fitzpatrick more more likely to be seen shooting behind the the arc there, but showing the ability to get to the hoop and get an easy layup for Notre Dame. Jumper, no good. From Carey, and that one rebounded by Chase Antonor, and the Irish will look to push the pace and. That's how they like to run it as Antonor misses the layup at the rim. They also like to pressure defensively. Tough to do so on a bigger court here at Blue Cross Arena, but I'm sure you will see some full court pressure at some time tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the Notre Dame staple is try to try to extend their defense, try to get the other team out of the rhythm. Um, in man here, typically they play zone. Three ball, Caden Carey getting involved here. His first points of the night. It's down to a one-point Notre Dame lead. Yeah, his first shot seemed a little rushed, I think. You know, a freshman. Um, that one much more in rhythm. Sherwood into the lane. Finishes off the window. So I'll tell you, Alex, you know, Notre Dame, typically you see a lot of threes for them. Almost every shot so far, if not every shot today, has been in the paint. I think that's a great strategy by Mikey. And a jump ball called. Going to go to AC as it will stay here on this end. Nearing the midpoint here in the opening quarter. Some good action in this Class C3 final. On to the wing for Alex Vilku. He'll pass it back out for Carey. Back to Vilku, into the lane. No good, touched about every part of the rim before bouncing off. Sherwood in the lane, couldn't get it to fall. And now here come the Wolves quickly the other way. Alex Vilku Ooh. had it rejected by Woodruff. But the foul is called, and the Wolves will head to the line. Mikhail Walker waiting at the table for the Irish. I think Notre Dame's just got to do a little better job stopping the ball and transition sooner. Uh, Woodruff, very athletic play there to get the block, but hammered home with the body. Vilku, second free throw attempt. No good. Empty trip to the line. Sherwood leaks out, but he can't get the finish. Solid job hustling back by Devin Moran, altering that shot at the rim. Said Notre Dame, typically a zone team, uh, playing a little bit more man now for Mikey, especially with, with Coach Mike Rapone before, almost always uh, zone. See a lot more man out of uh, the current Notre Dame staff with uh, Mikey at the helm. And Vilku headed back to the line. Looks like a foul call on Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Vilku with another chance here.
Typically with these smaller schools, Alex, depth can be an issue. It's only two fouls through four minutes, but, you know, you don't see the teams go as deep usually in the smaller classes as you would in the larger classes like we'll see tonight. So Vilku able to knock down both from the line on that trip. One point Irish lead. 345 remaining here in the first. Jay Antonor puts it on the floor and he gets the finish. Antonor headed to the line for a three-point play opportunity. And again, Notre Dame yet to take a three. Everything's going to the hoop. I, I think that's a great strategy. Jay Antonor, just every time I watch this kid play, he just makes things happen. And that is a really tough shot. Three-point play completed by Antonor. And there's that full-court pressure delivered by the Irish. Into the corner. Carey, three, no good. Sherwood on the rebound. The run out for the Irish. And the foul called on the Wolves. Yeah, one of those long shot, long rebound. Sherwood grabbing the ball and immediately starting their, their break. And, you know, again, one of the things I think Notre Dame does have an advantage is getting up and down the floor. Um, Sherwood able to get all the way inside the paint before he was fouled there. And, um, you know, continually, when we see a lot of long shots here, it does do a great job for a team like Notre Dame that likes to run, getting their break started. Antonor out to Woodruff. Back to Antonor. Now Sherwood on the wing. Into the lane, through the contact. No good. Irish an extra possession. Antonor to the rim. Boy, is he athletic. It's a really strong finish there by Jay. Six-point lead for the Irish now. Late stages of this first quarter. EC trying to find its rhythm on the offensive end. It's been Alex Vilku doing a lot of the damage thus far. Carey has gotten himself involved. But they need more from him as this game progresses for sure. Sherwood no good, but he'll head to the line. Really Great flash there by Sherwood to get himself open. So Vilku already with his second personal foul, and it looks like he's going to head to the bench as a sub comes to the table. It's Kohler Preston. Sherwood knocks down the first, and Vilku indeed to the bench, as Notre Dame will also bring in a sub for the shooter, Maverick Hall, waiting at the table to check in for Sherwood. Sherwood will take a break. Hall presents a little bit different of a skill set than any other player on the Notre Dame roster. Some tenacity and strength inside. Yeah, I think with when they bring when they go a little bigger with this, you see a lot more ball screens. Maverick does a great job of creating space for the for the ball handler. Um, rebounding wise, he is the top rebounder. You're going to get a little uh, foul here on Walker. Now an eight-point advantage for Notre Dame. They've had control throughout this first quarter and give their effort on the defensive end a lot of credit for that. Yeah, most of our poor Canis uh, offense is, is perimeter-based where we've seen Notre Dame having more success getting to the hoop. Another three here. Moran off the mark. Antonor, the quarterback for the Notre Dame football team, throwing it into the front court. Hall in the lane. And that one knocked away. The rejection from Preston and Tim Vilku. Yeah, I believe Antonor is going to Kuyuka to play baseball, if I'm not mistaken. Showing off his arm strength there, absolutely. Right. Talented multi-sport athlete getting it done here in the championship game as Carey is fouled near midcourt. And it looks like that's the second on Fitzpatrick. It is. Sherwood will check back in. So two fouls on... Alex Vilku, two fouls on Ryan Fitzpatrick. Both teams without a starter here with 153 remaining in the first quarter due to foul trouble. A 
Again, we're seeing Arcport Canis Rega mostly perimeter oriented offense here. They have not had many offensive rebounds. It's just one of those things when you have everybody outside the, the three point line, you don't have the opportunity to get those offensive rebounds. Ford from the short corner. Sherwood coast to coast. Yeah, he's, he's really good getting to the basket. Moran over to Carey. Off the dribble, closed off by two Notre Dame defenders. The pull up from Tim Vilku, no good. Sherwood in transition once again. Closed off by four Wolves defenders this time. They're not going to allow him to get to the rim a second consecutive time. And now Antonor steps back. Three ball, no good. Hall couldn't save it. Looked like he stepped on the end line. Yeah, and like I said, I think that's the first three that Notre Dame's attempted. And took seven minutes for them to let one fly from downtown. But 17-9 lead here for them. I think they're pretty happy with their offense in the first quarter. Yeah, controlling this one on both ends are the Irish. 1-2-2 two, two press. Not allowing Arcourt Canis Arega to get into its offense quickly. It's really led to some disjointed possessions. There's the pull up there. All the way around the rim and out. Ford couldn't get it to fall. Walker... The tie-up, jump ball, and it goes to the Irish. When you can't get it to fall, you can't get it to fall, Dan, and that three halfway down. Yeah, good job of going in and get at least creating the jump ball possession here. Um, I think Notre Dame's done a great job of holding him to one shot. Shot clock is off. Final 10 seconds here in the first quarter. Notre Dame trying to put the cherry on top to what's been... A fantastic first eight minutes. Sherwood into the lane. Off the glass and in. Ten-point Irish lead heading to the second quarter. You know, we saw this last night with these, these guards that can score. You know, this is just really good. You see Hall, Maverick Hall giving the nice screen. Sherwood, great body control, able to softly put it off the glass and in to give Notre Dame the 10-point lead going into the second quarter. And with Sherwood scoring in the early going, that is a boon for Notre Dame. He is their top scorer. He is their offensive engine. Really makes the machine go for the Irish. And when he's seeing it go in early, has yet to connect from the outside. Certainly has that in his bag, but very impressive his ability to get to the basket here throughout the first quarter. I think, um, you know, when you take a look here going into the second quarter, Mikey Rapone's going to be extremely pleased with that first quarter. Notre Dame offensively, defensively, rebounding especially, not allowing our poor Kansas Reagan any really second chance points. You know, Coach Huey probably talking about long game, three quarters, ten points is definitely not insurmountable at any point of the game, let alone after the first quarter. So, you know, they're going to start with the possession here. I would like to see them get a little bit more going to the hoop. Um instead of relying on the three-point shot so often. They also got to get Carey involved. I know it's extremely difficult with Jay Antonor following him all over the court, but they need to find a way to get the ball in his hands and for him to get some shots up in this game if they're going to have a chance to come back. Yeah, if they're struggling in the half court, one of the best ways to make that happen is in transition. Chase Antonor, the rebound put back. The youngster, a freshman. Getting it done on the championship level. And Jay Antonor nearly took that one away. And a 10-second call on the Wolves. And Coach Huey barking in the ear of the official. What could he be questioning here, Coach? I'm not sure. Notre Dame never had possession there. So um, going back to Chase Antonor, I feel like uh, he's one of those kids that has played a little bit more as the seasons went on as a freshman. And I think that he has really helped Notre Dame finish this season strong. That one rejected at the rim by Preston. He's had a couple of blocks since being inserted into the game. Carey, aggressive, take coast to coast. He's followed by Woodruff. He'll head to the line for two. 
That's a smart play from the top scorer from Mark Port, Candice Orega. You sense your team is struggling. You have a bit of a run out there. Find your way to the rim and, at the very least, draw a foul. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, and we, we just talked about this. Like They're having a hard time getting him going in the half court transition. You know, you, I know Jay Andrews doing a great job on him in the half court, but it's tough in, in transition to find the guy, be able to stop him. What we saw there was Woodruff and Sherwood trying to get back. Carey having a little extra motor there to, to accelerate to the hole. Yeah, that was a one-on-three, and he converts both free throws after the foul. So a fruitful transition possession there for the Wolves. Back down to a 10-point advantage for the Irish. Seven minutes to go here in the second as Evan Fitzpatrick is checked into the game and takes it to the rim, but he couldn't get the finish. Evan Fitzpatrick, Ryan's younger brother, another freshman here who has gotten a little bit more time also as the seasons went on. Uh, all this experience is going to help those two, him and Chase, as their high school careers go forward. Sherwood collects the rebound. Streaking up the sideline. And Antonor can't get the finish at the rim. This defense just harassing the Wolves in the backcourt. And Coach Huey forced to call a timeout trying to avoid... Potentially another 10-second call there. Yeah, I think that's just the case of just slowing things down. Looked a little like it could have been leading towards a turnover. So that's a good timeout, good use of his timeouts. So Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Our first of six matchups here at Blue Cross Arena. Championship Saturday in Section 5. Coach Dickens will be with me for the first two matchups. Coach Buddy Brasky will be with me for the next three. And then Doug Krigo will be with me for the final matchup of the night in Class AA. We'll go through the schedule for you in a moment. Obviously starting with Notre Dame versus Arkport Canis Arega. Good start to this game for the Irish as they lead it by 10. This is the Class C3 final, and a double dribble is called on the Wolves. It will be followed by the Class C2 final, an all-Genesee Region League matchup, which Coach, Coach Krigo and I discussed it last night. Five Genesee Region League teams in the sectional finals on Saturday. It's really going to be a celebratory day from members of that Athletic Association as Sherwood pulls up. No good. Chase Antonor on the rebound and the putback. So an all-Genesee Region League matchup at noon between Byron Burgeon and Alexander in Class C2. And then Pembroke from the Genesee Region League will take on C1 Titan Lions at 2 p.m. as Antonor really getting involved here in the second quarter. Another timeout called by Orkport Canis Arega as the Notre Dame lead has swelled to 14 points with 534 remaining in the second. And then following that 2 p.m. matchup between Pembroke and Lions, at 4 p.m. we have Elba taking on four-time, I believe, sectional champion Avoca Prattsburg and uh, state championships as well for Avoca Prattsburg. And then at 6 p.m. we have the Class A game, East versus Wayne, and then at 8 p.m., Unbeaten Greece Athena taking on defending state champion Victor. That really is the game of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, we talk about even the next game, uh, we're going to have one of those programs win their first ever sectional title as Byron Bergen. Nor Alexander has, has hoist, hoisted up one of the blocks. Um, I don't think Alexander's ever been in a final, so uncharted territory for them. Great lineup of events. You know, I feel like one of those opening comics, not good enough to get the encore the headlines so i'm just going to be the opener for the first two but fortunately i have a nice seat reserved for me down on the baseline for the last few games don't sell yourself short coach coach dickens putting in work this weekend four games between the two days and it's really some exciting basketball we've already seen yesterday the class b1 and b2 final the B2 final won by Avon as Jaden Sherwood knocks down the three. He's had a fantastic first half. 
And then in the B1 final, following Avon's win, Ornell fell at the hands of Minders. And then in the nightcap, Franklin defeated by UPrep in the AAA final. So our first three championship games taking place last night. Six more to come this morning, this afternoon, and tonight on the Section 5 broadcast network. And John Guarino and Joel Belthazer doing yeoman's work here throughout the weekend for the Varsity Media Sports Network. John's been doing calisthenics since he arrived at 8 p.m. He's got a long day ahead of him. He's got to keep those legs fresh. Even though he's, he'll be sitting down all day. <laughs> I'll tell you, Alex, if there's one player, like I, I know we talk about like the leading scorers and all that all the time as being the top kids. Every time I watch Jay Antmore play, whether it was last season or this season, he makes things happen. And that is one kid, if I, if I was going to pick somebody that I'd want on my team, that's who I would start with. No doubt. Timeout called by Notre Dame. We'll take a quick break here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. We'll be back with the Class C3 Final. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. You love your new Honda, and we do too. That's why every new Ralph Honda comes with Honda Service Pass, a complimentary maintenance program for your vehicle's first two years or 24,000 miles. For peace of mind and maintenance made easy, see us at Westridge Road and online. Ralph Honda. After you've been injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter time limitations where you can be denied your benefits. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. All right, and we're back here at Blue Cross Arena, the Class C3 final. Notre Dame dominant in the early going, a 17-point advantage as Maverick Hall backs down the defender, and that's the... Third block of the game for Preston and the finish in transition. Maybe that'll get the Wolves going here, Coach. Yeah, I mean, they're struggling offensively, and I think they've had their most success getting to the hoop. Ford with a good use of his body there. I think, you know, again, him and Carey are going to have to get something going for them if they're going to get themselves back into this game. And Chase Antonor has had himself a second quarter, drawing the foul there. I believe he's up to six points. I think he has three or four rebounds already as well, and now a trip to the charity stripe. Yeah, nice job of posting up there using his body and you know, a little different player than his brother. Kind of rush that one a little bit. Take your time. You get 10 seconds to release the ball from the foul line. Antonor 0 for 2 from the line. Perhaps some freshman jitters there from the youngster. It's a different environment here at Blue Cross Arena. The cavernous atmosphere down on the floor with plenty of room behind both baskets as Ford heating up here for the Wolves right at the right time. It's down to a 12-point Irish advantage, the five-point spurt for the Arcport Canis Orega sophomore. Ball rolling around. Ends up in the hands of Walker at the top of the key. I think Coach Huey wanted a few more of his players to dive on the floor after that one. Yeah, the 50-50 balls, you can't be losing those when you're trying to make a comeback from down almost 20. Antonor into the lane. Hold the finish at the rim. Great facilitation from Antonor there. The penetration and the dump down to Hall. Yeah, the, the weak side defender's got to drop down to the block on that. Carey at the rack, no good. Tipped around, Antonor feeds it ahead, Walker at the rim, but it's blocked. Tim Vilku got a hand on it. Arcport Canis Orega upping the effort on the defensive end over the past few minutes. Yeah, it's a great leak out by Walker. Good job finding him, but unable to convert. Wolves to the rim, it's Moran headed to the line now. A 
foul called on Chase Antonor. He's going to send Moran to the line for two. Makes the first. You know, two minutes to go here in the second quarter and down 12 now, I think. You're going to have a lot more excitement going to that locker room if they can get it down under under uh, 10 points, get it to single digits. Um, our core Canis Riga's offense really starting to click here the last since the timeout the last two minutes. So definitely still some fight in the Wolves. A nice poke away there. And just last night we saw Hornell fall behind by 12 points. And they stormed all the way back and took the lead in the second half before falling to to Minders in the end. Yeah, I mean that's 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 some of the things here that we see in the finals. Like we talked about a game of runs, and actually, Coach Carey, when I did talk to him uh, Friday, he talked about this being a game of runs, being able to withstand a run from Notre, a team like Notre Dame, which is obviously going to go on runs at times, trying to withstand them, hold the course, and all those types of things, and. Great hustle play there by Notre Dame to um, keep that possession alive. And Carey picks up his second foul here in the first half. Nice out of bounds play there by Coach Rapone. Anytime you can get your leading score and open luck and get fouled at the, at the basket, that's a. Great job of drawing something up, and you know Notre Dame doing this with Ryan Fitzpatrick sitting the majority of the second quarter, if not the whole second quarter. So here come the Wolves, final minute 20. Here in the second quarter, 14-point lead for Notre Dame. The Irish have controlled things throughout. It's been an impressive start for Coach Mikey Rapone and his bunch. Carey missed everything on that one. Maybe glanced the backboard. Zantanor bounces that one into Hall. Nice ball fake. Up. Missed the rim. Sherwood tipped it out of bounds. It will go back to AC. Great job by Hall there posting up as I saw him create space and just actually got himself a little bit too far under the basket and didn't have the angle to finish. Carey trying to assert himself, but he's been swarmed by Notre Dame defenders throughout this game. Inside. No good from Ford, and now here comes Notre Dame. Sherwood into the lane, had it tipped away. Hall came up with a loose ball. Another good ball fake, but couldn't get the finish. However, he was fouled. Coach Huey wanted the travel call, and I think he was right. Yeah, there was a lot going on in there, and good job by Sean LeVert going over to explain his situation on this. Another outstanding official. No, maybe Hall did get the two feet down. Yeah, I don't. I think that's a great job there by LaShawn. Certainly looked like a travel, but it's one of those plays where can't really judge a book by its cover. You got to look closer, and these officials certainly have the closest look of anybody in the arena. Well, you don't end up refereeing a finals game if you're not a solid official, and I think we've seen a great job all weekend so far to start this off. Hall coming up a little short. I don't know if you noticed that, but he shot his free throw from about 17 feet. Maybe if he's up at the line from 15 where the stripe is, that might go in. Final 32 seconds here. In the first half, a 15-point lead for Notre Dame. Arcport Canis Arega needs a bucket here to close. Gain some momentum going into the halftime locker room, but it's not going to help as they nearly turned it over. However, Preston came up with it before it was knocked away by Sherwood. That Notre Dame all over the floor, and you know Chase Antnor, great rebound there. I think he's got to outlet that ball to one of the other guards, though. Not really his game there to try to lead the break, but... You know, again, these Antnors are all over the all over the floor making plays, making things happen for Notre Dame. And a great block by Sherwood there. Carey left alone. 
Missed the three. Chase Antonor on the rebound. Jay Antonor with it now. Up to Sherwood. Final 10 seconds here in the second. Sherwood to the block. Pulls up. No good. Rebound to Preston. Four seconds left and a foul called on Walker. And AC will have it with 3.8 remaining here before halftime. Nothing really hurt there as they're not in the bonus situation. One of the things that has changed, the rule changed this year, Alex, is five fouls in each quarter is when we shoot the bonus. Preston, the alley-oop to beat the buzzer. And it's down to a 13-point lead at halftime. Notre Dame, an impressive first half. And they head to the locker room with the lead. Here in the Class C3 final, Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. We'll take about a 10-minute break, and we'll be back to break down the first half and enjoy the second half here from Blue Cross Arena. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. You love your new Honda, and we do too. That's why every new Ralph Honda comes with Honda Service Pass, a complimentary maintenance program for your vehicle's first two years or 24,000 miles. For peace of mind and maintenance made easy, see us at West Ridge Road and online. Ralph Honda. After you've been injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter time limitations where you can be denied your benefits. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors & Ferris, your trusted and dedicated Workers' Comp attorneys. Connors & Ferris, your Workers' Comp attorneys. Since 1922, Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp has provided an opportunity for children with disabilities to simply have fun. Each year, more than 2,500 kids enjoy a one-of-a-kind camping experience at our 157-acre camp in Rush, New York. Our staff members are experienced and highly trained to work with children facing all kinds of physical challenges. At Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp, kids with disabilities get the chance to have fun and just be kids. For more information, please visit us at sunshinecamp.org. Save the date. On June 25th, 2024, Section 5 is hosting its second annual scholarship golf tournament at the Lynx at Greystone, beginning with a 10 a.m. shotgun start. Last year's event successfully raised over $11,000 and we're now able to award $500 scholarships to student athletes in each sport that we offer. Visit section5.org slash golf tournament to get the latest information and to register your foursome today. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. The production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org slash watch. Coming into Lattimore on a daily basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in. As soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and, you know, we, we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain, laughing and smiling and having a great time. And, Almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT, they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life, and then somebody there says, I can help you, there's no better feeling than that.
Whoa, slow down, dude. We're not trying to break the sound barrier. Wow! Why turn, buddy? What the heck? Woo. Hey, you got your blinker on, bud. Hey, driver, two hands on the wheel, please. Ten and two, not when and two. Gotta be kidding me. Oh, nice. I love the Rolling Stones. Almost as much as you love the Rolling Stops. You know what? No music. Let's just go peace and quiet. Uh, yeah, let me put you on speaker. I'm in a drift right now. Is your driver as crappy as all the other ones? Oh, yeah, for sure. This dude is a mess. They're all a mess. <laughs> Seatbelt. Hey, if you think you can do a better job driving, why don't you give it a try next time? Dude, I lost my license a year ago. Why do you think I needed the drift? Unbelievable. Nobody likes a backseat driver. Where is everybody? I thought there was a game today. Not even the game day officials. Empty stadiums could soon be a reality due to the nationwide shortage of referees. It's time for spectators to bench the bad behavior and treat them with respect. Ah, uh, guess I need another drift. Be loud, be proud, and be positive. Times have changed, but one thing's the same. At Ralph Honda, we're a family. For three generations and more than 90 years, we've helped you get where you need to be in a safe, reliable vehicle. Find your next Honda at Ralph Honda. Proud to be part of your family. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash Mugs and More to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest. love your new Honda and we do too. That's why every new Ralph Honda comes with Honda Service Pass, a complimentary maintenance program for your vehicle's first two years or 24,000 miles. For peace of mind and maintenance made easy, see us at Westridge Road and online. Ralph Honda. After you've been injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter time limitations where you can be denied your benefits. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated Workers' Comp attorneys. Connors and Ferris, your Workers' Comp attorneys. Since 1922, Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp has provided an opportunity for children with disabilities to simply have fun. Each year, more than 2,500 kids enjoy a one-of-a-kind camping experience at our 157-acre camp in Rush, New York. Our staff members are experienced and highly trained to work with children facing all kinds of physical challenges. At Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp, kids with disabilities get the chance to have fun and just be kids. For more information, please visit us at sunshinecamp.org. Coming into Lattimore on a daily basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in, 
as soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and you know we we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain, laughing and smiling and having a great time. And almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT, they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life, and then somebody there says, I can help you, there's no better feeling than that. All right, everybody, and welcome back. It's the Class C3 final here from Blue Cross Arena. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. A big lead for Notre Dame. It's been a dominant first 16 minutes for the Irish, really taking it to the Wolves on both ends. The pressure defense turning into offense and some runouts for the Irish. Jaden Sherwood. Jay Antonor, Chase Antonor, a lot of names getting it done for Notre Dame. Yeah, really impressive first half by Notre Dame there. And, and um, you know, last year coming up short, I think they had a really great game plan of getting the ball to the basket tonight, and that really sparked their first half. I will say, Arcport Canisarega, 11 points in the first 12 minutes of action, nine in the last four, so maybe they're starting to feel their way here a little bit at the Blue Cross Arena. And, Nothing is more important for our poor Canis Rega than these first few minutes here of the second half. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Wolves can find their way back from this deficit. As Caden Carey has yet to make the impact his team hoped he would. And you got to give Notre Dame's defense a whole lot of credit for that. Absolutely. I think he has the 1-3. I might be mistaken, but nice... Great set coming out of the halftime for the Irish. Sherwood, an easy look inside. And the Irish add to their advantage. It's now a 15-point lead. So uh, some stats at the half. Leading Arcport, Canis Arega has been forward with nine points in the early going. There's a foul called there. And it goes against Ryan Fitzpatrick. Carey thus far with five points, the three and a couple of free throws. While leading Notre Dame has been Jaden Sherwood as the three ball for Ford as he heads to his impressive morning. Yeah, he's really kept them in this. And as I was saying, Sherwood up to 15 points already throughout that first half as Fitzpatrick finishes at the rim. And the Irish get the response. Yeah, it's a nice cut by Fitzpatrick there to get himself uh, an easy look at the basket. Sherwood a three, four for four from the free throw line and a number of two-point field goals as well. He really had a fantastic first half for the Irish. Yeah, and, and a quick timeout here for Arcport Canis Regas. This is the lead's gotten to 14, and I think just Coach Huey here is going to just really try to reemphasize keeping them in front of you. They're losing some defenders in the half court. What happens is you have a lot of people's heads turning to the ball, so they miss or they lose the guy that they're responsible for guarding. And you saw Fitzpatrick there. One of the things is if the guy guarding you turns his back or turns his head to you, cut to the hoop because he can't see you. I'd like to see him get something for carry here going to the hoop. A lot of the timeout. It's a 14 point Irish lead. Here in this C3 final, Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you. Notre Dame coming off a seven point win over Fillmore in the semifinal. Trying to win their first championship in two seasons. Our poor Candice Arega dominated North Star Christian, the defending sectional champion in the semifinal as the finish at the rim there for Devin Moran. Or excuse me, for Vilku. Good job getting all the way to the basket and using his body to shield off the defender. Fitzpatrick, top of the key, no good. Goes out of bounds. The Wolves will take back over. Nice job hanging around by Arcport Canis Arega, keeping it right around 12 points here, but they need to make a run here in the third. Yeah, and 
Notre Dame hasn't really gotten many steals from this 1-2-2 two, two press, but what it does is it just it, it slows our Port Canisarega down. It extends. It, it takes time off the shot clock. Um, and I really feel like our Port Canisarega just has had not much rhythm offensively. Can Vilku to the rim, a blocking foul called on Woodruff. And that will send Vilku to the line. Alex Vilku back into the game with those two fouls for our Port Canisarega. He was he exited during that first half after picking up a couple of personals. Three fouls now on George Woodruff, and he will exit for Notre Dame. A bit of foul trouble. And Tim Vilku knocks it down. One of two from the line, 11 point lead for Notre Dame now. AC continuing to chip away. See if the Irish have another answer. Walker, nice bounce pass to Chase Antonor, no good. Tipped out of bounds, and it goes off the Irish. Hanging around, Alex. You know, it's 11 here with a chance to get this under 10 for the first time in a while. Crazier things have happened. We have yet to see the madness here at Blue Cross Arena, but with six games today, I'm sure we'll see something happen throughout the course of this long slate as Sherwood lays it in at the rim to get Notre Dame back on track. And we had just talked about how they really haven't been turning it over against the press. That's a great job at Sherwood. Now they get two in a row. Sherwood to the rim again. And just like that, it's back up to a 15-point lead. So I think they forgot to add the last basket before that one on the scoreboard here at Blue Cross Arena. That one rattles home. Big three for Tim Vilku. And that answer is the Irish spurt. Other players stepping up offensively for Arkport Canisarega. Vilkul and Ford really being the spark plugs for them. Is that call on the floor? The Irish will take it underneath. Well, on Carey, his third personal foul midway through the third quarter. Really good job on that last bucket that they just showed. We showed the highlight for for Sherwood. Not putting the ball on the floor, just catching it, taking two steps, and laying it in. Yeah, Sherwood has had a lot of good games this season. This may be his best of the bunch, really saving his best for last year. As Chase Antonor has fouled, he's had himself a game as well. And you mentioned it, didn't start the season in the starting lineup, but since being inserted, he's really provided great energy, tenacity, and scoring here for the Irish. Yeah, absolutely. Looked like all ball there. What, what did you see? I actually wasn't looking at the monitor. I was looking at... Uh, Antnor on this, and you know, I think that has been a huge boost for Notre Dame. I mean, he just, for a freshman, he just has a great presence out there defensively, offensively, plays bigger than he actually is. Um, I know that Mikey has been really happy with his defense also. Carey in transition, finishes at the rim. I think they're going to need to get Carey going, and this is a nice job here. A little push the ball out. A little bump and a finish for him. So the three-point play opportunity coming up for Carey, and he completes it. It's down to a 10-point Notre Dame lead. It's been a while since we could say that, Coach. Yeah, and, and I think it's going to start defensively for our court, Candace Ray, to try to push Notre Dame a little bit further out. They are trying to extend their defense. When you do do that, you do open yourself up for backdoor cuts and layup possibilities for the Irish. Antonor into the lane, up and under. What a move, but he could get the finish. That would have sent the Irish fans into a frenzy. Yeah, Jay's been a little quiet here in the second half, so good to see him get going to the hoop. Tim Milku, that's his second team third. Shots 
So we've reached the midpoint here in the third. Notre Dame still leading by double digits. Our first of four matchups featuring Genesee Region League teams here at Blue Cross Arena. C3, C2, C1, D, all featuring teams from the Genesee Region League. It's sure to be a packed house throughout the afternoon. Finish inside, and here come the Wolves as they're starting to find their rhythm. First time we're under 10 points in a long time. Tim Vilku with the finish. Nine-point lead for the Irish. 331 remaining here in the third. Panther Sherwood trying to post up inside. Gets it on the perimeter up to Walker now. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. Walker back to Chase Antonor. Pulls up from the elbow. The floater. No good. Rebound goes to Alex Vilku. Free ball, no good from the corner from Moran. Antonor, ball fake, can't finish. AC on the board. And a foul called on Jay Antonor. Great job by the Wolves hanging around here. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Ant Chase Antonor with a nice move down there. Couldn't get it to fall, but a good little run out there by our Port Candace Ray. Good use of creating the contact to get the foul in transition. So Evan Fitzpatrick will take a break. George Woodruff back into the game with three fouls. 2.45 remaining in the third. Spinning into the lane was Alex Vilku. And a foul called on the Irish. That's going to be Woodruff's fourth. About 30 seconds after being reinserted into the game. Not ideal to the Irish. No, Woodruff is a good hustle player for them, defender. Um, he picked up four fouls in only probably about three minutes of game action. That is their fifth foul, so our court Canis Rega could be getting two free throws, a chance to cut this to seven. First free throw is good. Timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick break here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you. It's the Class C3 Final. Arcport, Canis Orega, trying to storm back. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. You love your new Honda, and we do too. That's why every new Ralph Honda comes with Honda Service Pass, a complimentary maintenance program for your vehicle's first two years or 24,000 miles. For peace of mind and maintenance made easy, see us at Westridge Road and online. Ralph Honda. After you've been injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter... All right, and we're back here at Blue Cross Arena. One more free throw coming up for Alex Vilku. And he can't hit. Out of bounds, it's off the Irish. The Wolves are going to keep it. Chase Antonor thought that one off a Wolves player. Let it go out of bounds. But Arcport Canis Orega will take it. Still with that eight-point deficit. So the largest lead for Notre Dame has been 17 points. And the Wolves have cut it all the way down to eight. An incredible job hanging around for Coach Huey and his bunch. Yeah, you know, that's one of those things we talked about, a game of runs, and Coach Huey, you know that 
knew that Notre Dame was one of those teams that score in bunches. Defensively, they've really picked up. That ball got tipped. And the rebound goes to Sherwood. Final two minutes approaching here in the third. Great third quarter for AC. Sherwood, huge three. What a performance from the Irish senior here in the title game. Yeah, I was thinking to myself, I was about to say it, that they really should try to get something for Sherwood here. And he's been a little quiet in the second half as well, but that's a big shot by their senior. <laughs> Here's Carey. Into the corner. Gets it back up top to Vilku. He'll try the three. No good from Tim Vilku, but... Arcor Candis Arega able to chase it down. Ford creates the extra possession. Carey can't hit. And Sherwood on the rebound. Both teams hustling and bustling throughout this game. Yeah, and he's he's just really struck. Notre Dame's obviously doing a, a great job on him, making everything difficult for him. Sherwood the pull up, no good. Carey collects the rebound. Feeds it ahead. To Tim Vilku, nice ball fake at the rim in the finish. Coach Rapone trying to slow things down here and run a set. He's calling out a play. Really nice job there by him to get everybody on the same page. It is a little difficult on the larger floor to get everybody's attention. Sherwood had that one knocked away. Rejected by Ford. He's made a big impact on this game. A jump ball, and it's going to our court, Candice Orega. Yeah, Sherwood had let that ball go, and I think Carey thought that he could grab that, but that would have been a travel if Sherwood did catch it, so he tried poking it. He, either, either way, it's going to go with the ball. It's going to go back to our court, Candice Orega. Final half minute here in the third quarter. Nine-point lead for the Irish. The Wolves a chance to cut it to seven or perhaps six with a three. Tim Vilku. Now into the hands of Alex Vilku. Carey will take it at the top now. Three seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock. Along the baseline and a foul. Alex Vilku headed to the line. Yeah, the Vilkuls have done a nice job. have done a nice job of attacking the hoop, finding openings there, and they're going to have a chance again to get this to seven. And went around the rim and out from Vilku. One of two, 10 seconds remaining in the third, eight point game. Ivers will have one more chance. Sherwood jogging it up the floor. Pulls up from deep, no good. Rebound to the Wolves, and that's gonna do it for the third quarter. We head to the fourth and we got a ball game. 46 to 38 your score here in the Class C3 final. The Wolves trying to mount a comeback for the ages. Notre Dame's led by as many as 17. We'll take a quick break here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens with you. Injured at work, you might feel like you're going up against your employer. But the truth is, your employer is not the opponent, the insurance company is. And recently, the Workers' Comp Board has issued new shorter time limitations where you can be denied your benefits. Now, more than ever, you need to call Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Since 1922, Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp has provided an opportunity for children with disabilities to simply have fun. Each year, more than 2,500 kids enjoy a one-of-a-kind camping experience at our 157-acre camp in Rush, New York. Our staff members are experienced and highly trained to work with children facing all kinds of physical challenges. At Rochester Rotary Sunshine Camp, kids with disabilities get the chance to have fun and just be kids. 
For more information, please visit us at sunshinecamp.org. All right, and we're back here at Blue Cross Arena. Eight minutes remaining in the Class C3 final. Arcport Canis Orega trying to storm back. And a foul called on the Wolves. That's a, that's a really good play. Watch that happen. And they're trying to, they've kind of ran that same set to start a lot of the quarters. They're trying to slip Sherwin through for an open luck. And the Arcport Canis Orega defender just absolutely just stopped him in his tracks. He wasn't going to give up the layup that time at least. Sherwood inbound to Chase Antonor. At the rim in the finish. What a game from the freshman here in the final. Yeah, that's, that's a really good job of using his body, creating, getting uh, separation from the defender and getting the easy layup. Into the corner, three ball. No good from Ford, appeared to miss everything. And another baseball pass. And another nice bounce pass from Antonor. Hall couldn't get the finish, but Chase Antonor is there to clean it up. And to begin this fourth quarter, things could not have started better for Notre Dame. It's up to a 16-point lead. Absolutely, and getting a huge contribution from the freshman there out of the... Uh, or excuse me, a 12-point lead. Out of the third quarter timeout, they're going into the fourth. Another rebound by Chase Antonor. Just They do the dirty work. Like, you know, like I said, Jay's been a little quiet. But holy cow, Chase has had a phenomenal second half. So 6.50 remaining here in the fourth. 12-point lead for the Irish. Is that one rejected by Preston? He's been a force defensively inside. He has. We've seen him send back a couple uh, Notre Dame shots at the basket. Nice job by Hall running the floor, too, for the big guy. And conversely, not a great job by Arcourt Canis Rega getting back on D there. That allowed Antonor to get the easy look on the putback. It just seems that Notre Dame has outworked the Wolves here this morning as Fitzpatrick knocks down the three from the corner. Yeah, that whole that whole sequence was set up by Ryan Fitzpatrick getting the steal. Um, and, and you're right, like Notre Dame looks a little bit more composed out there. And, you know, I think, that, like we said, they lost last year. They You come back hungrier. Um, Hall showing that he was a lineman during the football season, not being able to corral that one, but... Sherwood right there and finding Fitzpatrick. That's his first three, I believe, that he has made, and he is a really good shooter. So Notre Dame trying to put the finishing touches on what's been a dominant performance here in the Class C3 title game. The Irish battle-tested after making their way through a tough Genesee Region League, which has sent five of its member schools to the sectional finals here to be played at Blue Cross Arena on Saturday. Six matchups total to come here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. We start with Class E3. Next at noon, Byron Burgeon and Alexander take on one another for the C2 crown. Both of those teams trying to win their first sectional championship in program history. Then defending champion Pembroke takes on Lions in the Class C1 game at 2 p.m. Avoca Prattsburg and Elba taking on one another in the 4 p.m. game in Class D. While in Class A, East High and Wayne take on one another at 6 p.m. And at 8 p.m., Greece, Athena, and Victor in Class AA. We'll have all six matchups for you right here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network as Jaden Sherwood continues his MVP effort. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you couldn't have asked for a better start to the fourth quarter for Notre Dame here. And uh, another great 50-50 ball ended up in Notre Dame's possession. And Antler finding Sherwood for the... Basket with the contact as well. So Sherwood at the line looking to complete the three-point play. And he does. What a morning for Jaden Sherwood. Yeah, it's been it's been a really impressive performance from him. Um Obviously, their top scorer, but he's done it defensively as well. We're going to see Jay Edward get the steal in the layup. And the finish. They're, they are playing re their best basketball at the right time, Notre Dame. And, you know, when we start getting into these C's and the crossovers next week, I think we're going to see some really competitive basketball games. 
Down the lane, up and under, no good. But a foul is called, and that will send Vilku to the line. Maybe that's an 11 0 run for Notre Dame to start this fourth quarter, and that's how you close out championship games. Irish have led for much, if not all, of this game. You remember the early going. I believe they've led the whole thing. Notre yes. Dame got the layup right off the tip. Yep, and that lead was built to 17 points at one point. The Wolves came storming back, cut it down to eight, but now it's at 19. Really? What a response from Notre Dame and Coach Mikey Rapone. Yeah, really good defense there by Vilku. Notre Dame continuing to extend this defense, and that is going to use a lot of clock as they try to hold on to this. And Mikey Rapone going to get going after his first sectional title after the long storied career of his father, the career leader in victories in all of Section 5 basketball, and I believe he's in the top five of New York State. A foul called on Carey, an offensive foul. Coach Huey not happy with that. And that's Carey's fourth foul. And in our court, Canis Orega player remains down on the floor with a lower body injury. We're going to take a quick break here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network as the Wolves player hopefully is able to rise to his feet. Save the date. On June 25th, 2024, Section 5 is hosting its second annual scholarship golf tournament at the Lynx at Greystone, beginning with a 10 a.m. shotgun start. Last year's event successfully raised over $11,000 and we're now able to award $500 scholarships to student athletes in each sport that we offer. Visit section5.org slash golf tournament to get the latest information and to register your foursome today. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. The production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org. All right, and we're back on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. It is the Class C3 final here at Blue Cross Arena, a 19-point lead for Notre Dame over Arcport Canis Arega as a Wolves player has left the court. Alex Vilku with a lower body injury, hoping the best for him and that he can return to the floor. Five minutes remaining here in the championship game. Our first of six matchups on the Section 5 Broadcast Network and Notre Dame has been dominant. Fitzpatrick for three, no good. Ball tipped away and it goes to the Irish. Timeline, Antonor had it tipped away. But it's going to stay with the Irish. So coming up next, the Class C2 final between Byron Burgeon and Alexander Coach, expecting a hotly contested matchup as these two teams have played during the regular season, members of the same league, and a lot of them play together in the offseason in AAU and whatnot. 
it's going to be an exciting atmosphere inside the arena. Yeah, I think both teams with, with really good big men, and um, I think it's going to come down to who handles that the environment the best, especially at the beginning of the game. I mean, Byron Burden was just an absolute uh, dominant performance from Braden Chambry in the semifinals as I rewatched that game on Thursday at school while I was at school. Chase Antonor continues his phenomenal effort. A three ball from the corner. 22 point lead for Notre Dame. Yeah, we were kind of expecting Carey to be the best freshman on the floor today, but it's been Chase Antonor, and it's no doubt he has played really well for Notre Dame. Absolutely. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who wins the battle of the big men. Braden Chambry. Also, Dylan Pohl for Alexander has been carrying that team throughout the year. It's going to be a battle in the post, and I'm excited to see it. Another note, Byron Burgeon, coached by Roxanne Noeth, could become, I believe, the first female head coach in Section 5 history to win a sectional championship. Right, and, and Roxanne's done a, a, a tremendous job at Byron Burgeon over these last few years. And I should especially. say female head coach in boys basketball to win a okay. sectional championship. Uh, she won one as a player for the Byron Burgeon women back in the 1980s. Um, and I believe that's the only sectional title that Byron Burgeon has, boys or girls. So 3-12 remaining. And also Alexander looking for its first title. Coached by first-year head coach Jalen Smith. He's really led this team to prominence in a hurry. Yeah, I mean, you just see it. Like, these, these kids, like, getting them in the gym, getting them better at their skills. And um, they are a really cohesive unit, and they work well together. And the style of basketball that Jalen has brought to Alexander has really led them to uncharted territory. A foul call that will send the Wolves to the line. That's the third foul on Hall, but with a 24 point lead, looks like it's only a matter of time for the Irish. 22 title appearances, coach. 10 titles for Notre Dame in search of its 11th here tonight. The first for head coach Mikey Rapone. He did win one as, I'll call him an associate head coach for coach Mike Rapone a couple of seasons ago. And they reached, they found some success last year, were unable to come away with the sectional title, but now minutes away from doing so. Right, and a lot of those have been, in, have been in Class D, but now they've moved up with the new classification. You see, it's Chase Antnor, another three. What an effort from him. He has really come on so strong as the season has progressed. Carey answering on the other end, saying, I'm here too. I will say my first ever time that coming to the Blue Cross Arena, I believe in 1986. Really, really dating yourself. Yeah, I know coach. I am, but... I did watch Notre Dame lose to Cuba before it was Cuba Rushford at the buzzer, um, which really um, got my excitement for basketball and wanting to have the opportunity to play here, which I never did. Um, but I did have the opportunity to coach seven or eight times here at the Blue Cross Arena, and it is a honor to be able to play here and play in this arena. And like I've said multiple times, Section 5 and the Section 5 committee just do a great job with everything they do from – taking care of you before the game, the finalist brunch in, um, really feeling like um, it's quite an honor being able to play here. And that store is continuing that tradition for all of these teams that get the opportunity to play at the Blue Cross Arena. And a full timeout, 156 remaining here in the fourth. We'll take a quick break on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Alex Brasky, Coach Dan Dickens, Joe Belthazer, and John Guarino with you. Basis is the highlight of my day. You know, we'll have patients coming in. As soon as they hit the physical therapist, we introduce ourselves and, you know, we, we bring them back and you see a whole bunch of patients who are in pain, laughing and smiling and having a great time. And almost for that one hour that they're with us in PT, they're forgetting about all their problems. When you're lost with pain, reducing your quality of life, and then somebody there says, I can help you, there's no better feeling than that.
All right, and we're back here at Blue Cross Arena. The final 156 of formality is Notre Dame putting the finishing touches on what's going to be a Class C3 title win. The 11th in program history. Bill Koo, no good. Rebound, put back, and in from Dan Clark, the senior. His first time appearing on the floor and making the most of it. Yeah, big body out there for, for our poor Canis Rega, getting uh, the offensive rebound and able to lay it in. going to see a lot of fresh bodies for both sides. Like I said last night, if that ball touches your hand and you just got in the game, you have one job, and that's shoot it. Heat check time. Oh. And the shot clock violation. As Notre Dame will bring in its subs, sensing the moment here, hugs on the sideline as the Irish a minute and two seconds away from becoming champions. Arkport Canisarega is going to be returning the majority of their roster as well. So, you know, again, something they can learn from, take this experience, and hopefully lead that into continued success next year and hopefully get back here. And taken away, Vilku. In transition, gets the finish. Onto the floor for Notre Dame. Let's see if we can get these names there on the roster. Three ball, no good. Got Gabe Milam out there. He takes the three and knocks it down. I'll tell Milam, you. the trifecta. 10, 20 years from now, he's going to say he had a big three at the Blue Cross Arena. <laughs> it's probably going to move from with 20 seconds left to in the first half. Evan Fitzpatrick also out there. Matt Compton, Stetson Hall, and Chance King as the Irish claim their first championship in just a couple of seasons, the 11th title in program history. Irish eyes are smiling. Notre Dame, C3 champions. What a performance here from Notre Dame as they claim the title. It's a 19-point victory for Mikey Rapone and his bunch over Arkport Canis Arega and the trophy coming out to midcourt. Yeah, I think sh between Sherwood and Chase Anor and Jay Anor in the first half I thought was huge for them. And, uh, you know, different result from last year. And, again, Mikey had talked about not finishing here. And uh, defensively they didn't play great last year, but a quite a different story today. Um, and we talked about 10 a.m., not easy. I mean, we don't play games at 10 a.m. on a normal basis. So answering the call, answering the challenge, and congrats to Canis Rega Artport for finishing their season off, getting to the finals. And like I said, majority of these kids back. I believe Tim Vilku is the only starter that they're going to be losing. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see them back here next season. So that's going to do it from the Class C3 final. Reminder, five more matchups to come here on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. We'll be back with the Class C2 title game at noon featuring Alexander and Byron Burgeon. Alex Brasky for Coach Dan Dickens, John Guarino, and Joe Belthazer signing off from this one. We'll see you in about a half hour.
For 47 consecutive years, the basketball referees in Rochester Board Number 60 of the International Association of Approved Basketball Officials have annually awarded to the highest rated boys basketball team in each league the prestigious G. Thomas Emanuel Sportsmanship Award. This award is based upon the principles of character and integrity so generously demonstrated by Mr. Thomas Emanuel. Accordingly, the award is designed to go to the school team, which best exemplifies the highest degree of sportsmanship, character, and ethics among its coaches, players, and spectators. Each school is rated by officials to determine the league winner. Ladies and gentlemen, receiving the award for Class C3, the winner in Livingston County is Abijah Gath of Keshequa High School. Helping to present the award is Steve Simmons, representing IAADO Board at number 16. Board 60 thanks you for thanks you and your program for demonstrating outstanding sportsmanship throughout the 23-24 basketball season. University of Rochester Orthopedics and Premier Sports have joined together to recognize the number one seed in each classification. They now present a commemorative plaque to the number one seeded team, honoring the team that has achieved the highest ranking for the regular season. Presenting this year's award is Chairman of Section 5 Boys Basketball, Ed Storrs. The award in Class C3 is presented to Coach Randy Crouch of the Fillmore Eagles. And coach, stay right there because the Coach of the Year Award in memory of Tom Downey is sponsored by Lilac Real Estate. It is presented annually to the coach in each of the nine classifications who in the opinion of his coaching peers is the coach of the year in their respective classification. This year's Brigham Mills Coach of the Year Award in Class C3 is presented to Coach Randy Crouch of Fillmore. The runner-up plaque is presented by Hilton East and Angels in Your Home to the second place team in each classification. This year's runner-up award in Class C3 goes to the Arkport Canisarega Wolves. Will the coach and captains of Arkport please come forward to accept the award? Each member of the runner-up team will receive a silver medallion from Section 5. Will the members of the Arc Park Kenneth Syringa Wolves please come forward when your names are called to receive your awards. Number 13, Connor Westfall. Number 23, Lucas Smith. Number 24, Kohler Preston. Number 34, Taven Levetsky. Number 45, Dan Clark. Uh, the starters for tonight's game, number 11, Devin Moran. Number 14, Caden Carey. Number 15, Ibra Ford. Number 21, Alex Vilku. And number 31, Tim Vilku. Assistant coach Thomas Rink. Also number 13, Landon Swain. Assistant coach Landon Swain. 
And number and assistant coach D'Angelo Carey. And the head coach of Arkport, Candice Rega, Mr. Max Hui. The championship team will receive the Section 5 championship trophy provided by Section 5. And now, committee member Mike Rapone presenting the Section 5 championship trophy for Class C3 to the Notre Dame of Fighting Irish. Ladies and gentlemen, the tournament committee is proud to present a special award named in honor of the former chairman of Section 5 Boys Basketball, Bill Farrell, and sponsored by McLean Associates to the winning coach in each classification. Dave Richardson, Section 5 committee member, will present this year's Class C3 Bill Farrell Memorial Championship Coaching Award to Batavia Notre Dame's Mikey Rapone. Each member of the championship team will receive a Section 5 Championship Shield, a Section 5 Championship T-shirt, a Section 5 Gold Medallion, a Championship Cap, compliments of Angelo Planning Group, and a Championship Cinch Bag, courtesy of Ralph Honda and True Form Manufacturing. Will the members of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish please come forward when your names are called to accept your awards. Number zero, Mikel Walker. Number one, Gabe Millahan. Number two, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Number three, Jay Antonor. Number four, Evan Fitzpatrick. Number 12, Chase Antonor. Number 13, Matt Compton. Number 14, Tristan Cephas. Number 20, Stutson Hall. Number 21, Chance King. Number 23, Jaden Sherwood. Number 44, George Woodruff. And number 50, Maverick Hall. Assistant coach, Paul Clark. Assistant coach Otis Thomas and the head coach of Notre Dame Mikey Rapone (laughs) 
Greater Living Architecture is providing sportsmanship awards to the players from each finalist in each classification who best exemplify good sportsmanship both on and off the courts. Presenting the awards are Ed Storrs and Dave Richardson. This year's Greater Living Architecture Sportsmanship Awards are presented to Connor Westfall of Artport Canisterega and Chase Antinor of Notre Dame. Throughout the tournament, an independent panel of people knowledgeable of the game of basketball vote for the outstanding players in each classification during the last two rounds of tournament play. These votes are then tabulated to determine the all-tournament team and most valuable player in each classification. Members of the all-tournament team will receive a commemorative plaque sponsored by Connors and Ferris LLP. The 2024 all-tournament team for Class C3 is as follows. From North Star, Lorenzo Danessi. From Fillmore, Campbell Musher. From Notre Dame, Chase Antonor. From our part, Canisterga, Ibra Ford. From Notre Dame, Jay Antenor. From Arkport, Canisaranga, Caden Carey. The final member of the all-tournament team is the M&T Bank Most Valuable Player. This award is presented to the player in each classification who, in the opinion of the voters, made the most significant individual contribution during tournament play. The 2024 M&T Bank Most Valuable Player in Class C3 is from Notre Dame, Jaden Sherwood. Congratulations to all the award recipients in Class C3. Fans, stick around. We're going to do it all again in about 20 minutes or so. It's the Class C2 championship game featuring the Bees of Byron Virgin and the Trojans of Alexander. That game begins at noon. Section 5 champions have been crowned. Back up top. Harriman wins it! Pearman for HFL in double overtime! Now you can purchase the ultimate keepsake by downloading a copy of the game to watch and cherish forever. Shot and a goal! Ella Pierce, the sophomore midfielder. Wow, the Red Raiders have done it. Just visit sectionv.org slash watch and select your game to get started. Congratulations to this year's champion. 